Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for uh, keeping your pace up to this point. Remember, the previous video we summarized the measurements of the file, folders, directories uh, in terms of looking at the demand and the supply of the storage uh, devices. Uh, then we found that, you know, in terms of demand, you know, currently we are demanding huge storage uh, system because of the, you know, increase in the technological development, especially in the area of artificial intelligence, big data systems, which require a huge amount of data for accuracy. Otherwise, those systems will not really be accurate if we don't have enough space for storing big data. So the demand is very high now and the supply is low. So this, you know, if you are interested in the principle of demand and supply in economics, then you will understand how this affect the price because when the demand is high and the supply is low obviously that will lead to high price you know because people are demanding what is not being supplied or what is limited but when we increase reduce the demand uh, that means the supply has to be increased and when the supply is high of course, that will lead to a low price. I'm just trying to <laughs> analyze this, you know, give you the summary of um, the price theory in economics. But I'm not going to go into that details. So let me stop here. But what I need you to take home from the previous video is that the storage capacity of the computer system are getting smaller and smaller as the need for data increase or increases due to the development of artificial intelligence and big data systems which require which are required for the technological uh, evolution if you like and that necessitate a huge amount of data for them to be accurate so we need data storage that can handle those kind of data being generated for AI system and the demand is very high the supply is very low the demand is high and that is because of the problems we have currently you know the current storage capacities are not enough because of the big data obviously the system are very costly as I say, the higher the demand, the lower the supply will lead to the increase in the price. So the cost of get the storage, getting the storage devices uh, to the level that can meet uh, the need for artificial intelligence and big data is very high. So uh, that's the reason why you know the current systems are very costly. You know. On top of that, the current system also consume a lot of physical space. That means we need something physical in order to gain uh, somewhere to keep the data. You know, apart from consumption of the space, you know, the power, huge power, electrical power also need to be supplied in order to power up the system, you know, for us to come up with a sensible storage space and it is very you know difficult and very expensive you know to generate that power with such a capability that will be compatible with the increase in the need for data storage for the uh, big data systems also in trying to do that you know you will find that we are generating more heat you know and as a result of that you may need some sort of cooling system and in in producing the system to cool uh to cool um uh, uh in the hard drive for example 
you will find that we are polluting the environment in state by generating carbon dioxide in the air in trying to solve the problem. So you can see how the problems are scaling up. You know, synergistically, one problem is leading to another just like that. That's why, my friend, um, we have this kind of problem. And another problem is also the limited time retention, uh, retention time. You know, the current system has short, uh, how can I say, short lifespan because the data will be short lived as we need more space. Uh, the data previously stored needs to be cleared from the system so that we get more space for new data. And consequently, you find that the retention time is very low. You know, we cannot keep uh, the old data for a long time. And the suggested solution was that, you know, I, this solution came actually the, from the research which is being done currently. You know, there's need for better information density, obviously, which is more resilient and cost e efficient and effective data storage with huge uh, density, you know, ultra, ultra density storage medium to meet uh, those exponential growth in the demand for data storage. We also took a look at uh, the studies which are now being done to, you know, use the biological system like DNA, bacteria, and proteins to generate, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the system for storing data, you know, biologically in the living cell. All this will be aiming at reducing uh, the problems mentioned above, such as uh, the costs, you know, the need for electricity, the need for more space, etc., etc., and improving the environment, obviously. So, the feasibility of this study is. I, for me, I cannot, I'm, I'm neutral because I know that any biological system uh, is a natural system and anything natural that can be detected uh, may be equivalent to physical. So if we know the physical properties of the natural existence of any biological system, that means that will be their weakest link. They will be limited. They cannot be uh, endlessly existing like that because their physical properties will be limited and that will pose another problem perhaps that's my analysis but it is a, it's a good news we will be having at least you know huge uh, storage uh, capabilities of, uh, uh, of folders files directories that will allow us to explore the world of artificial intelligence as well as uh, the world of data science, dealing with big data, you know, to solve complex problems in the world. That is a good news, it's a good news, my friend. So in this particular video now, we are going to focus on how to organize our current system because, you know, we are not at that level yet, but uh, we are getting there. So we need to manage what we have currently. So we need to learn how to organize ourselves digitally in order to put ourselves in position to, you know, be able to explore data and, you know, and share data and do the work that we need to do uh, to meet our daily life style. Because communication is now the key in all areas of our lives. We cannot survive without computer or without IT. It is now a part of our life. So we need to know how to organize ourselves digitally. Despite of the challenges, you know, we have with the storage, the current file system, the folders, you know, still, you know, they provide the best way for us to, you know, to, to program ourselves, and for the program and for the data we use to keep us digitally going, moving forward and managing our life. So um, it is therefore very important to gain the effective uh, 
file management skills, which is very crucial in the world of digital uh, communication. We need this to control uh, the version of our works, to control uh, the, the categories of our work, to group our work, to share our works, to be able to manage our life properly, uh, logically, we need to be organized digitally. That's why I found it very interesting uh, for us to learn a little bit extra concerning file management, because that's the only way we can be able to achieve this goal. So my friend, we are going to cover file management skills as we are you know, taking this course uh, as um, the logistics, you know, for starting our Java programming language course, because you need to know how to manage the files, the folders, since you will be downloading a lot of information from the internet, getting the Java development kit, getting the Java runtime environment, installing a lot of plugins and some frameworks as we continue developing our program. We also need to install some uh, text editor, you know, like we have integrated development environment text editor, we have uh, the local text editor. We all, uh, we need to, to be able to have all of them in one place. And to do that, we need to know how to manage our file systems and you know, folders and directories you know, very well. That is why file management skills is very, very important. And that's the reason why I decided to cover these so that those who are novice or with low uh, skills, or those who are just starting uh, to learn about computer or learning how to program, will focus mainly on the local storage management. You know, this is just for novice users. You know, but if you are advanced users and you want to improve your skill, uh, I think this this particular video, this particular course about the file management skills will also be very uh, productive for you. So we will be covering the storage location. Uh, we'll be, uh, you know, seeing how user users uh, folders are located. We also will learn how to create folders and gaining access to the folders and files and how to restrict access to our files. We are going to see how to create shortcuts to the folders and file that we use regularly. And also, we are going to learn a little bit about file extensions, visibility, and file relocation, as well as, you know, securing file and folders. And, you know, we are going to learn how to arrange our files and folders in a place where we can easily and quickly access them. We're just going to see how to you know, do the search for the file and folders that we already have in our system and how to remove or, uh, uh, or duplicate files and folders. So we are going to also see how Explorer will help us to, uh, you know, to, to add, you know, to, 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 to address, you know, the, to, to, to use the Explorer address to copy all move files around. And also we're going to see, you know, a lot of things concerning global file uh, management skills. And this is the advanced skill for, uh, I would say, international, <laughs> because I'm going to teach you how to, to, to use Git in this particular section, or GitHub. This is very important for software developers, you know, because you need to learn how to share your files, to control the version of your work, and how to share what you've done with millions of people out there or within a team, a software development team, if you have one, 
this course, this particular part of the course will be very useful. And I'm also going to talk about something about Dropbox. <laughs> it's really interesting, you know, it's a cloud computer system that allow you to, you know, to keep your file in the cloud rather than in the local device so that you can access it from anywhere, anywhere, whenever you need it. You know, when you are traveling, you may not need to carry your computer, uh, storage devices like USB or external drive because you just need to access internet and, you know, boom, you are in your uh, Dropbox and then you can access all your documents from there and share it, obviously, and sign some documents with somebody. You can write a letter and then send it to somebody to, to, to sign that letter and then put in that document and you keep on sharing files like that. It's a very interesting system to learn. And those skills of file management will help us to be able to program, be able to you know, collaborate with others, be able to be organized digitally. And that is the goal for this video. So thank you for viewing. In the next video, we are going to start exploring our local storage uh, management of file folders and directories in the local system. I'll see you in the next video. This is just an introduction to the file management skills. Thank you for viewing and happy learning.